Hi everyone, welcome to Osteology classes. Today's topic is Norma Frontalis. What you are seeing in the picture here is the anterior aspect of skull which is called as Norma Frontalis. Let's see the bones contributing the formation of Norma Frontalis. So the first bone which forms the forehead here is a frontal bone which is an unpaid bone and just below the frontal bone there are two large apertures which are called as orbits and below these bony sockets where eyeballs are present the upper jaw is formed by a pair of maxillae and there are a pair of nasal bones which forms the root of the nose and cheek bones are called as zygomatic bones which are present on the either side of the facial skeleton and lastly the mandible the mandible is present in the lower part of facial skeleton which forms lower jaw and it is an unpaid bone so let's see each part in detail first we shall begin with the apertures so we know there are three large openings the two openings are the orbital openings and these two orbital openings present on the either side below the frontal bone and the big large middle opening is called as anterior nasal aperture. So let's begin with the boundaries of orbit first. So if we see the orbit, the outline of the orbit, if you trace the outline of the orbit, it is just like a quadrangular having upper boundary called as supra orbital margin lower boundary called as infra orbital margin and the same way the medial one is called as medial orbital margin and the lateral one is called as lateral orbital margin so let's see some features of these first so if we see the supra orbital margin it is formed by the frontal bone and if within the supraorbital margin if you see keenly at the junction of medial one third and lateral two thirds there is a notch which is called as supraorbital notch and supraorbital notch in few individuals it may be like a separate foramen called as supraorbital foramen so the structures passing through the supraorbital notch are supraorbital vessels and nerves. Let's see the features of infraorbital margin. Infraorbital margin medially it is formed by the maxilla and lateral part of the infraorbital margin is formed by the zygomatic bone. The junction between the maxilla and zygomatic is called as maxillozygomatic suture. And this maxillozygomatic suture runs down obliquely separating the maxilla and the zygomatic bone. Let's see the features of other two margins. So we shall begin with first medial. So the medial orbital margin it is formed by two bones again. So the medial it is formed above superiorly it is formed by frontal bone and inferiorly it is formed by the frontal process of maxillary bone. The junction between these two bones is called as frontomaxillary suture. So that is about the medial margin. Let's see the lateral one. So the lateral orbital margin is formed by again two bones. So the upper part is formed by the frontal and the lower one, the inferior part is formed by the zygomatic bone. bone. And the junction between these two bones is called as frontozygomatic suture. See, this is all about the orbits. So next we shall see about the nasal aperture. The nasal anterior nasal aperture it is. Anterior nasal aperture is pyriform in shape which is narrow above and wider below. And let's see the boundaries of it. Superiorly the upper the narrow part it is bounded by two nasal bones. So the right and left nasal bones 
they are joined by a suture which is called as internasal suture so the two nasal bones will form the upper boundary of nasal aperture and lateral boundary and inferior boundary of the nasal aperture is formed by the maxillae right and left maxillae and if you see the inferior part of the nasal opening that is the nasal aperture inferiorly if you see we can see the two maxillae joins to form the upper jaw completely so this suture between the two maxillae is called as intermaxillary suture and just above the intermaxillary suture there is a sharp spinous projection which is called as nasal spine anterior nasal spine so this is all about the features of nasal aperture one more point to know is rhinion rhinion is the lower end of internasal suture means we know the two nasal bones joins together at internasal suture so the lower end of internasal suture is known as rhinion and let's understand the features of norma frontalis region wise so if we see the frontal region first the frontal region we know it is formed by the frontal bone now and just above to the orbits where the eyebrows are present on the medial side of the orbit there is a curved elevation which is called as superciliary arch so there are two superciliary arches present above the both orbits the next feature is between the two superciliary arches there is a smooth median elevation which is known as glabella and the next point to know is the nasion we know already rhinion which is the lower end of internasal suture nasion is nothing but the upper end of internasal suture that is the junction between the internasal suture where it ends and frontonasal suture so that it is like t like where the horizontal limb meets with the vertical limb the point where it meets it is called as nasion the next important feature in frontal region is frontal eminence which is also called as frontal tuber it is a rounded elevation present above the superciliary arches which is called as frontal eminence or frontal tuber or frontal protuberance importance is the ossification of frontal bone begins from this frontal eminence or frontal protuberance and later after the development if we see the frontal bone it develops as two separate individual bones and they meet to form a suture in between called as metopic suture metopic suture usually closes before 9 months after birth and the lower part of metopic suture may be persistent in very few individuals the whole metopic suture may be present around in 0.5% of individuals so why we are knowing about this metopic suture metopic suture is clinically important because physiologically doesn't make any difference but clinically we should know it because to differentiate it from fractures when we take x rays it is a normal condition unless otherwise we take x ray we won't be knowing about this metopic suture if at all if it present it doesn't make any physiological difference only thing is clinically during diagnosis clinician should not get confused with a fracture so that is about the metopic suture which is present hardly in 0.5% of individuals the next region is the maxillary region so if you see on the either side of the nasal aperture the major part of the face is formed by the maxillae on the either side so features we will do now so first feature is just 1 cm below the infra orbital margin there is a foramen this foramen is called as infra orbital foramen infra orbital foramen transmits infra orbital vessels and nerves if we see the lower border of the maxilla the lower border of the two maxillae they join to form a border together called as the alveolar border where we can see 
teeth and tooth sockets. So the center two teeth they are called as incisors. Incisor fossa. Incisive fossa is situated just above the incisor teeth. So we are seeing the two incisors. A shallow depression just above to the incisor teeth is known as incisive fossa. Next, the most other feature is about the canine tooth here. Very laterally it is present to the incisor teeth. So the canine tooth, the root of the canine tooth is quite deeper and it makes an eminence which is called as canine eminence. Canine eminence is produced by the root of canine tooth. The next region is the zygomatic region which forms the cheeks. So it is also called cheekbone and it is marked by a foramen which is a very small minute foramen which is present over the zygomatic bone. This foramen is called as zygomaticofacial foramen and structures passing through it is zygomaticofacial nerve. So the last region we are going to do is mandibular region. So the mandible forms the lower jaw which forms the lower part of facial skeleton and we know that mandible is the only movable bone in the skull and the mandible developmentally it develops as two separate halves. So the joint between the two halves which is present as a faint ridge is called as symphysis menti. Symphysis menti is a faint ridge which is present in the midline of the mandible indicates the line of fusion of two halves of mandible. The next important feature which we can see is norma frontalis of mandible is mental protuberance. So triangular projection which is present just below the symphysis menti, the lower part of the mandible, there is a triangular protuberance which is called as mental protuberance and which is a characteristic feature of a human jaw. The next is a foramen. We can see a easily seen foramen which is present approximately below the second molar and this foramen is called as mental foramen and it transmits mental vessels and nerve. And just like incisive fossa which we study just now seen in maxillary region, similarly even in the mandibular region there is a fossa below the incisor teeth of lower jaw called as incisive fossa which is a shallow fossa present below the incisor teeth. And one point to know in norma frontalis. So we know supraorbital notch and the structure nerve coming out of it is the supraorbital nerve. Supraorbital nerve is a branch of ophthalmic division of trigeminal nerve. Next is the infraorbital foramen. Structures passing through the infraorbital foramen, the nerve here it is infraorbital nerve. Infraorbital nerve is a branch of maxillary division of trigeminal nerve. And lastly the mental foramen, the nerve coming out through the mental foramen is mental nerve. Mental nerve is a terminal branch of mandibular division of trigeminal nerve. So if we see the supraorbital nerve, Infraorbital nerve, mental nerve, they are indirectly the branches of trigeminal nerve which supply the most of sensory supply to face. So this is all about norma frontalis.